Hi, my name is Ken Buck and I'm a Solution Architect for Elatech. In this video, I will present an overview and demonstration of our newest method to upgrade card readers in the field, the Configuration Card. This feature is available in our latest version of the TWN4 Software Development Kit, version 304. This slide shows the front and back of the Configuration Card. This card can be programmed with a variety of card technologies to be detected, along with their specific decoding. When the card is presented to a TWN4 card reader, the configuration will be read from the card, the reader will update itself, and then will reboot. Total time from detect through reboot is about 3 seconds, which I'll demonstrate later. The front side of the card contains space to label the card with the particular configuration it will invoke, while the rear of the card contains instructions for use. The card is reusable, so caution should be used in labeling should you wish to change the configuration of the card. Basically, we don't recommend use of a permanent marker. Cards are printable, so if you have a card printer, it can be used for this purpose. Cards are sold in packs of 10. This slide shows four configuration cards, one blank and three which have already been configured. It shows one way to label the cards using an inexpensive label maker. This label can be easily removed should you wish to reuse the card. For the cards shown here, one will configure the reader to only enable Indala, Nextwatch, and GE Proxlite, while another will detect two flavors of HID Prox and iClass. The third will detect two flavors of Prox and will retrieve my name from my fair memory. We will program the fourth card in the demo. The demo will use each of these cards. Shown here is an Indala card, a GE Prox light, three different flavors of Prox, a 26, 34, and 37 bit, an HID iClass CIOS card, a Next Watch, and a MyFair Classic card, from which we will alternately read the UID and then we'll pull my name from stored memory on the card. Normally we would start our demo using the Tech Tracer application to determine each card technology and the length of data on the card. We would then spend some time to determine how to decode the number printed on the card. For the demo cards, which have a number printed on them, we've already determined the decoding and have labeled the cards appropriately. I still want to take a minute to install Tech Tracer from this dev pack because it does have one new feature. Let's navigate to the 304 development pack and open App Blaster. Now version 304 adds the ability to program configuration cards. This video assumes you're already familiar with version 300, so we'll move quickly through some of the steps. Select Program Firmware Image, then navigate to the Core Module Firmware folder and select Tracer. Select Open and Program Image. This will program the reader and it beeps when it's done. Note that the reader when it's in Tech Tracer mode uh, has a blinking red light That's so that you know it's in that mode. Okay, let's swipe the cards. HID Prox, MyFair, Proxlite. I won't go through the whole stack. What I'd like to show you is one of the blank configuration cards. Note that Tech Tracer is able to recognize the special memory map, which indicates it's a configuration card. Now let's swipe one of the previously configured cards and it tells us more. It now displays the serial number of the writer that was used to program the card. It also shows the file name used to create the card and the date and timestamp. Elatech Sales and Support keep track of the serial number of the writer and this number is actually programmed into the configuration card. So if a customer does have one of these configuration cards and would like to change the actual configuration, if they contact us, we hopefully should be able to find out who created the card and then they can follow up with the customer to actually make any edits. Okay, let's move on to create a configuration card, but before we do that, let's put the uh, reader into a new mode. Take it out of Tech Tracer mode. If we leave it in Tech Tracer mode, 
it won't actually use the configuration card, but will instead tell us some data about the, the card and that won't help us much. We want to reconfigure the card reader with the new card. So let's select image and now let's change it to core module keyboard except configuration cards. This will detect on the order of 26 different technologies but will leave the reader open to understand new configuration cards. Select open, select program image. And there's the beep. Okay, let's close this and let's go to configurable project. Let's select four cards for the demo. Two from the high frequency group and two from the low frequency group. We have a 26-bit HID Prox card, an HID iClass CIOS card which uses a random UID. As a result, we will need to use the 26-bit physical access code since that's the only stable number on the card. We also have a GE Prox light and a MyFair Classic card. In order to fully configure the reader, we'll need to visit each of the items listed in the Actions Items list. Let's do that in order, starting with transponders types, since that's already highlighted. Start with the low frequency cards and start L, select LF, then select HID Prox, then Add. Now if we had more than one Prox card, we would select Add a second or third time. Now let's select Casey Rusco, since that's the technology used for the GE Proxlite card. From the high frequency group, we select MyFair, then MyFair Classic, and then we select HIDI class and add. Now all the transponders are listed in the active transponder window. Next we go to the back to action items and we click the plus symbol on transponder types. Now we select the plus symbol on HID Prox, select the data source. This was a 26-bit card, so we select 26 bits. Then we go to output format and we're going to decode this as a standard Wiegand card. So some bits, first bit 9, we want 16 bits of data, decimal output, 5 digits. Next is the Casey Rusco card. The data source, this is a 40-bit card. It has no number printed on it, so we're going to take the output and we're just going to send it in decimal. Next is the MyFair Classic card. We select data source and we're going to use the UID. If we did want to retrieve something from memory, we would select data. We would then select the key used to lock that memory segment. These are the four default keys, but here's where you would put the customer key in. Select whether it's an A or B key. Select the sector where that data is stored, the block, the offset into that data, and the number of bytes of data you want read. We're just going to read the UID. And for output, we're just going to send the data in hex. And the last card is the HID iClass card. For data source, again, since this is a CIOS card, which uses a random UID, which means every time we read the UID it'll be a different number, we really can't use UID. So we're going to select physical access code. And again, this is a 26-bit card. Now, because we're reading the physical access code, we will need a TWN4-PI, I standing for I-class reader. So you need a dash PI reader to read the CIOS card. Under output format, again, we're going to use standard Wiegand decoding, 9 and 16, decimal output, 5 digits. If you're interested in learning more about the decoding, there's a video on our website which shows how we decoded all of these cards into the numbers printed on them. Please view that, view that if you're interested in learning more. Next, we select the USB template. Because I want to display the output in Microsoft Notepad, I'm going to select Core Module Keyboard and select Template. The next item to address is prefix suffix. For this demo, I'm going to prefix each of the card numbers with the first letter of my last name. Next item is behavior signaling. Here is where you would tell the reader whether to accept or ignore configuration cards in the future. Since I want to be able to demonstrate configuration cards, I'm going to select that option. This is also where you would be able to control or change the behavior of the LEDs and the beeper at startup, when a card's found, or at card timeout. Timeout is really a lockout time. This is the time the reader waits after card's been detected before it begins to look for the new card. 
This function prevents the same card from being read multiple times. So for the demo, let's change this timeout to one second and that will speed things up. The next item is options. From here, users can change the speed of USB communication, whether the reader reports its serial number to the driver, and other parameters. If the host to which the reader is connected can handle higher USB speeds, this is an opportunity to improve performance. Now, I currently have the reader connected to a USB 3 port on my laptop, so I'm going to increase USB speed to 500 characters per second. The last item is version information. Here is where we can save these settings in case we need to edit them in the future or to add another card technology to the reader at a later date. I'm going to change the app name to Demo. And I'm going to change the description to something a lot more illustrative. 26-bit Prox, 26 CIOS, ProxLite, MyFair, Classic, M UID. And that way, later on, I can determine what I had in mind for this configuration. We'll select Save. We'll navigate to the Applications folder. And that's where we'll store this file. Select Open, then Save. And the file has been saved. Select Create Image, <clears throat> and that will cause App Blaster to compile the application and check for errors. We're now ready to program a configuration card. Because the configuration card can contain the customer key for reading secure memory, all data and communication must be encrypted. This requires a special configuration card programmer. This version of TWN4 has a different look, so it doesn't get mixed in where there are other readers. Let me take a moment, pause the video, while I unplug the standard reader and plug in the TWN4 programmer. When I connect the TWN4 programmer, two new selections appear at the top, Create Configuration Card and Read Configuration Card Info. Let me place a blank card on top of the reader and Create Configuration Card. When I do that, it once again compiles the image and then it will program the card. Oh, looks like I didn't present a blank card, so it's asking me if I want to overwrite. Well, I don't remember what I put on this card, so I'm going to overwrite it. Um, this kind of shows why you need to label all of your cards. And when it's complete, it says done. And you'll note it presents the serial number of the card writer, and it also shows the file name that was used to create the file. So at this point, we have a program configuration card. So let me unplug the writer and plug in the reader. Okay, let's open Notepad. Recall that we last programmed the reader to detect all cards. So let's double check so we can see how the behavior changes when we present the configuration card. So clearly it's reading all of the cards. Okay, now let's present our configuration card. Okay, the reader's been reconfigured. Okay, let's test that uh, the configuration card worked. Remember, the configuration card we made should understand the 26-bit Prox, CIOS, ProxLite, and MyFair, and it should ignore everything else. It should also prefix with a B. There's our first card, our CIOS card, our ProxLite card, my fair UID, and it ignores the rest. Okay, let's move on to the next configuration card. This is one of the pre-programmed ones, and this looks like it puts the first initial of my name and then as a prefix, followed by the 26, 37, and 26-bit pack for iClass CIOS cards. Okay, it's reconfigured. There's the reboot. 
Okay, let's test our cards. There's the Prox card with a K. That's the 37-bit. I-Class CEOS. Ignores the Indala. Ignores the Next Watch. Ignores the Prox. My Fair. Prox Light. All right, let's try our next card. This is going to accept 26 and 34-bit Prox cards, and it's going to read my name from My Fair Memory. Okay, it's been reconfigured. There's the reboot. Okay, there's our Prox card. 34-bit. My Fair UID. Oh no, this reads my memory. That's right. And then it's ignore the rest. Okay, let's try our last card. Okay, and that one should understand in Dala. Next watch. Prox light. And it should ignore everything else. We offer a configuration card programmer kit, which comes with the TWN4 card programmer with a snap-in holder, 10 blank configuration cards, and a USB memory stick in a rugged plastic carrying case. The kit is designed for OEMs who will appreciate the time and labor savings, which can be derived from use of configuration cards. Configuration cards and the configuration card programmer are available separately as well. Since the configuration card programmer and the cards themselves use Alitech keyed encryption, only cards purchased from Alitech are compatible with this feature. Alitech also offers a complete service for providing custom configuration cards. With the GoToMeeting session, we can work with customers to understand the card technologies currently in use. From that, we can determine the required card reader encoding and can provide programmed and labeled configuration cards which can be shipped as quickly as overnight. Contact us for more details on this service. Thank you for watching and listening to this presentation. If you have any questions, feel free to contact us via phone or email. Shown here is our contact information for the U.S. and for the rest of the world. Also shown is our email address for any support questions you may have. Thanks again for watching.